The answer is that Egypt leans more to the side of China. However, its main desire is to maintain peace and to maintain a one-China policy. To better understand Egypt's position, we can explain what a one-China policy is, why it leans more to China's side, and why it desires peace. If this is your first time on the channel and you want a credible source of information on Egyptian politics, Middle Eastern politics, or global politics in general, you can subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. I put all scholarly and non-scholarly sources cited APA style in the description below. What is a One China Policy? According to the Chinese government, One China Policy is as follows, quote, There is but one China in the world. Taiwan is an inalienable part of China, and the government of the People's Republic of China is the sole legal government representing the whole of China. If this makes no sense, we can make it a bit clearer. According to the One China Policy, the territory highlighted red is China. There are two governments in this red area claiming to be China. The mainland People's Republic of China and the Taiwan-based Republic of China. Both governments claim to be the one true China and say that the other is a fake, illegitimate rebel government. If Egypt wanted to recognize the mainland Chinese government based in Beijing, it would have to agree that 1. The mainland government is the one true Chinese government. 2. The government in Taiwan is illegitimate. And 3. The government in Beijing has authority over the island of Taiwan, where the so-called rebels are. Agreeing to those terms means that Egypt cannot normalize relations with the government in Taiwan because it already agreed that 1. The government in Beijing is the sole legal representative of the whole of China and 2. The government in Taiwan is illegitimate. Egypt certainly agrees with the One China policy. After a 2022 visit by former US Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi to Taiwan, President El Sisi underlined his support for the One China policy. This view has also been reiterated in recent foreign visits by El Sisi to China. An article posted by the Chinese Embassy in the United States, for example, states, quote, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi reiterated that Egypt will always adhere to the One China policy principle and oppose any interference in China's internal affairs, end quote. The point about internal affairs leads on to the second question. Does Egypt acknowledge or recognize that the Beijing government has control over the island of Taiwan? While normalizing ties to mainland China, the United States, quote, acknowledged the Beijing government's claim over the island of Taiwan, but did not want to quote, recognize it. The distinction between acknowledging and recognizing is the difference between saying the Beijing government owns Taiwan and saying that the government in Taipei should not answer to Beijing. If a country quote, recognizes the Beijing government's sovereignty in Taiwan, it may see the other government in Taiwan as illegal, illegitimate, and that they would not be allowed to work with them. They may be unofficially sanctioned, at the same time, however, by quote, acknowledging the mainland sovereignty in Taiwan, the United States is saying that it has heard what the mainland thinks, will take it into consideration, but will not do anything about it. The resulting status quo is that even though the mainland government says Taiwan should be under its control, America is saying not really. The Chinese went along with it because they wanted to open their economy to America and defend themselves against the Soviet Union and decided to push the Taiwan question later down the line. This status quo allows the government in Taiwan to exist and have unofficial but very important ties with America, such as purchasing weapons from the United States in order to fend for itself and a potential attack from the mainland. It also allows America to trade and invest with mainland China to a very high degree. The United States' interpretation of the One China policy is the reason why almost 17% of all imports to the United States originate from China, despite China being one of America's biggest geopolitical rivals. Japan also views the Taiwan question the same way. It officially, quote, recognizes the government of the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China. And furthermore, the People's Republic of China reiterates that Taiwan is an inalienable part of the territory of the People's Republic of China. The government of Japan fully understands and respects this stance of the government of the People's Republic of China, end quote. This stance is responsible for almost $200 billion worth of trade goods moving between mainland China and Japan, almost half of Egypt's entire GDP. Between two countries who don't exactly have the greatest relationship, history, or liking of one another. I also like to note the heavy economic relations between the island of Taiwan itself and mainland China, which in total is also worth almost $200 billion. This makes sense if we consider the island of Taiwan as a part of China, and the government in Beijing being open to domestic trade in one of their supposed provinces, even though that province is ruled by what they see as a rebel government. 
Returning and applying this onto Egypt, the government in Cairo recognizes that there is only one China and that Taiwan is an inalienable part of China. Does it however recognize or does it acknowledge that the People's Republic has sovereignty over the island of Taiwan? Like the Japanese and American examples, Egypt is also somewhat ambiguous. Unlike America and Japan, Egypt is very disconnected from East Asia and does not have the same exigence to make a comment recognizing or acknowledging the Beijing government's sovereignty over Taiwan, but there is reason to believe it likely sides more with the government in the mainland than that of Taiwan. Why Egypt sides with China In short, to say that Egypt and the government in Beijing have anything but good relations is kind of an understatement. It all started back in 1956, when Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser made Egypt the first African and Arab country to recognize communist China and cut off ties with the government in Taiwan. Since then, the two countries have shared military support with one another. Both countries even reduced ties to the USSR in favor of the United States near the same time, the 1970s. Today, roughly 17% of all Egypt's imports come from China, and all Chinese exports need to cross the Suez Canal to reach the European market in the shortest time possible. It may be for such reasons that China has invested in the Suez Canal Zone's infrastructure. Even without that, however, China is playing a big role funding the new administrative capital of Egypt. Egypt's economic ties to the island of Taiwan by comparison are substantially lower, whereas the trade volume between Egypt and mainland China is over $16 billion, that between the island of Taiwan and Egypt is only around 500 million. Egypt was also one of the first countries outside the communist world to ditch the government in Taiwan and recognize the Beijing government, and relations between the two haven't advanced since then, while those with China have only proliferated and will likely grow deeper. Moreover, Al-Sisi's response to Nancy Pelosi's 2022 visit must also be noted. He said, quote, We have a consistent policy towards the situation in Taiwan, and Egypt always with China being one country, because this is in the interest of stability and security in the world. In fact, we do not need more crises than that affect us all. End quote. The insistence on China being one country is important to note because an American politician visiting Taiwan may send the message, even if it is not intended, that America is encouraging the government in Taiwan to seek independence and stop calling itself China, but choose to be another country entirely. Such a response is vehemently opposed by the government in Beijing, who as mentioned sees the island of Taiwan as not just the sovereign territory of the geographic region of China, but also sovereign territory of the Beijing government who rules most of China politically speaking. A Taiwanese declaration of independence may be met with force from mainland China, sparking another conflict to which President El Sisi stated, we do not need more crises than that affect us all. Egypt's desire for peace Even though Egypt might not be as sympathetic to the government in Taiwan as its American and European partners and allies may be, it still desires peace within the region, primarily because of how disastrous a war between the governments in Beijing and Taipei would be. Such an invasion would demand a refocus of the resources in mainland China and Taiwan that would mess up the global supply chain in many ways. Egypt, as mentioned, receives almost 17% of its imports from China, in addition to hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars worth of investments from them as well. China shifting into a war economy could likely risk all those investments, more so if it ends up losing the war and has no way of making up for them. Even the close economic relations Taiwan has with America in the technology sector would likely negatively affect the United States technology industry, which could see itself circle back and harm the Egyptian economy. All of which is without mentioning how Egypt's economy has already taken severe hits from the COVID, the Ukraine crisis, and the war in Gaza, whose effects may not even be fully realized. In conclusion, Egypt supports the One China policy and in doing so, likely opposes Taiwanese independence. Its close relationship with mainland China also means that it would likely side more with mainland China on most international disputes. However, it has a stated desire to support peace in the region, which may be tied back to its weakened economic position in the world.